Today we're going to get started with the VP430 board support package. So we're going to assume that you have run the VP430 uh, BSP installer. Um, and so once that completes, uh, you should have a you should have created a directory um, at C program files x86 Abaco. And you should see a VP430 standard development kit um, installed. And so one of the first directories I'm going to direct your attention to is the documentation directory. And so in here, you've got the getting started guide, um, the VP430 hardware user manual, VP430 software board support package guide, um, as well as uh, user manual for uh, RF API, which is an open source library that we which, which is used to communicate with the VP430. Um, we provide all the C, C++ source for that. Um, and we also give some documentation as to how it's supposed to work, um, as well as documentation on IPMI functionality, the VP430. Um, especially when you're getting started though, the VP430 getting started guide, SG021, uh, this will come in very handy. And so in this video, we're gonna be walking through some sections of this document. So other documents, to, uh, other directories to note, um, if I go back a directory, we have the sources directory, and this contains the source for LibRF API. So these are all the, the C and C++ files that are needed to um, communicate with the VP430 or to control it. Um, also have a reference application. Um, and so this, this is what we're gonna wanna run when we first get the VP430, just to make sure everything's running correctly. Um, so we'll, I'll walk you through that shortly, but uh, we give you all the source. So if you want to make any changes, you want to add functionality, or if you want to, you know, see what we did to get started and then base your development on that, you're going to want to look at the reference application and the libRF API. So going back, we also give um, the Petalinux board support package source. So um, if you look in the Petalinux directory, BSP, we give a Xilinx 2018.1 Petal Linux board support package. Um, this will be necessary when, when, if, if and when you need to rebuild the zinc. Um, and let's see here. We also distribute uh, pre-compiled binaries in addition to all the source. So if I go in here, we have a VP430 reference uh, application binary. And so this is just the same reference app that um, we were looking at earlier in the source directory, but here's a pre-compiled executable, so you can you know communicate with the board right out right out of the box and not have to rebuild anything. We also distribute a VP430 uh, QSPY quad spy programming executable, um, so that you know if and when you rebuild your uh, Zinc image, um, you can reprogram the board um, using this utility. Uh, one more directory to point out here. If I go back common firmware uh, the recovery folder. We distribute pre-built uh, boot images for the for the VP430. Um, here you have your boot up in image.ub. Um, and so this show to be programmed on the VP430's quad spy. So everything should just boot out of the box. If things are not booting, you might want to check the, the boot switches. Uh, this is described in SG021. Um, and if we go back to extracted, uh, here is the source that is necessary, or here's the source to recreate the VP430 uh, reference firmware. Okay. So uh, now let's, let's let's run the um, let's run the reference app. So I'm going to go to the bins directory, and actually I already have already have this open over here. Um, and before I run it, uh, I'll just describe the setup. I have a VP430 with uh, the ADC and the DAX uh, in a loopback configuration. So there's eight ADCs, eight DAX channels. Um, those are all loopback. Um, I have a COM connection to the front panel COM port um, just so that I can monitor, um, oops, I can monitor what's going on in the zinc. So as the reference app runs, it's gonna print out some debug information. So we can monitor that over here. Um, 
So let's get that out of the way. So I can do VP430 reference app. So I can just run it um, uh, with no arguments, and the app will print out um, us usage instructions. And so there are a number of arguments that are expected. Uh, number one would be the PC, which interface you want to use. You can use a PCI Express connection to the uh, PL, programmable logic part of the Zinc, or you can open a TCP IP connection to the Zinc, which in turn will communicate to the PL. Um, there is an argument for the IP address or the uh, device type. Um, next, we can configure the digital uh, down converters and digital up, up converters of the VP430. And then finally, we can specify our clocking mode. Um, just a comment on the DDC and DUC functionality. Uh, the reference image um, ships with a hard-coded uh, by 8 decimation and by 8 interpolation. Um, and so the DDC is configurable, the DDC and the DUC are configurable to the extent that you can specify uh, a frequency shift that you want to apply to your data. And that's independent um, across channels. So channel 0 can have a different DDC you know, uh, frequency than channel 1 or 7. Um, and, and the same for the digital up converter. And so we, we also show some usage examples, right? So here, if I want to open a, um, a PCI Express connection to the device, I would do 0, VP430, configure my digital down and digital out converters, and specify the clocking mode. And so this will be, so I'm going to run it this way with a PCI Express connection, VP430. I'm going to tune my digital down converter to a gigahertz, or I'm going to apply a negative 1,000 megahertz frequency shifts. So I'm assuming I have some some signal centered around one gig. And I'm bringing that down to baseband. Um, and likewise, I'm going to upconvert my baseband data to one gigahertz. I think I put an extra space, one gig. And I'll use the internal clocking mode. So when the reference app runs, uh, we're going to see it's going to configure the clock tree. So it's going to program you know, the clock. Um, clocks to the desired um, sample rates, which in this case are, are hard-coded to 6,400 megahertz on the DAC, 4 gigahertz on the ADC. Um, we do some, get some board diagnostics, and um, then we do, then we uh, configure the data acquisition and generation part of the design. So we're going to generate our um, DAC data, up convert it to gigahertz, and then on the ADC side, we're you know, down converting that data from one gigahertz to baseband, and we're capturing it. Um, in the reference app, we um, trigger everything synchronously, so uh, we should see that all ADC channels and all DAC channels are synchronized. So um, this will save the ADC data. Um, you have your I data, you have your Q data, um, and you can visualize that. Um, I've got a Python script that I ran on on data acquired from a previous run. And here it is here. So on the top plot, I've got my I data. On the bottom plot, I have my Q data. And this is for all eight channels um, super, or plotted on the, same, on the same plot. So one thing to observe here is that all the I data and all the Q data it, are synchronized. So this confirms that, that uh, both the ADCs are synchronized, the DACs are synchronized, but also the digital down converters and digital up converters are also synchronized. So out of the box, we provide um, eight synchronized AD or ADC channels and then eight synchronized DAC channels. Um, oh yeah, the last thing that the reference um, application does is it performs a memory test, a DDR4 memory test. Uh, this is only done when you have a PCI Express connection to the board, um, just to save time, because since the um, since the PCI Express connection is so much faster. So that'll perform a quick test to make sure that we are able to write to the P, to the DDR, read from it, and that we read back what we wrote. OK. So um, one thing, oh yeah, over here in the, in the uh, uh, COM connection, we can see some debug information that's printed out um, from the zinc. And so um, you know, this could be useful if you're trying to, you know, debug or during development. I like to have, like, to have a, you know, comm session to the zinc, 
um, just so I can confirm the commands that are being sent to the zinc are actually you know, working as expected. So one thing that we've we've done in this in the VP434 support package is that we've actually allowed everything to run headlessly on the zinc. So um, to do that, we have um, compiled the VP430 reference application um, on the Zinc. Um, and uh, since it depends on libRF API, that's also um, built in the Zinc image um, and distributed as part of the Peta Linux board support package. So this way, um, the VP430 can be configured to run you know, autonomously. So anything, any, any software that's built on libRF API should be able to compile relatively easily. Um, and it should not be as, as much of a development effort as it would have been otherwise. And so just to demonstrate this functionality, um, I can run the VP430 reference app on the Zinc. So here yeah, I've navigated to the Etsy directory because um, you know, this can, the, we, we distribute um, some waveform files that uh, the reference app depends on. So, so I'm, in, I'm in the Etsy directory, I'm gonna run the VP430 reference app and I'm going to use a link local TCP IP address. Here we go. And I'll just disable the DDCs and D, or rather, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't tune to any RF frequencies. I'll just put the DDCs and DDCs at zero. I'll use the internal uh, clocking mode and run the, um, run the reference app here. So it's going to print out some some debug information as well as run the reference app, um, which includes some of the diagnostics, um, frequency counters, and it's going to generate and acquire data just like the um, just like was done on the host side. So there we go. Um, we that that's kind of you know getting started right out of the box with the VP430 board support package. Uh, in the next video, we'll take you through actually uh, rebuilding the reference firmware and uh, uh, Peta Linux um, image or Zinc image, um, and uh, you know, rebuilding the the host software. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks.